Friday night, the Dodgers won 12 to 3. Milton Bradley led the way, hitting two home runs to get the Dodgers off and running. However, last night, despite a fine effort by Kaz Ishi, the Dodgers went down to defeat. A roller by Nevin produced the winning run. Padres 3 of the series coming up next. It's time for Dodger baseball. Live from Petco Park in San Diego, FSN West 2 presents the Dodgers as they take on the San Diego Padres. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Border City. It's game 12 between the two clubs. The Dodgers have won 7 of 11. However, the Padres came back before the biggest crowd of the year at Petco to beat the Dodgers last night. The Dodgers leading San Diego by two and a half and San Francisco by four and a half. The pitching matchups, two left-handers who are breaking even, four and four for Odalis, giving up a high ERA. David Wells, six and six. However, he has pitched pretty well. He's four and one in his last five decisions. The Dodgers will wrap up and head home after today's game. And looking at things, today's game is huge. It means actually two games. If the Dodgers win, they'll be three and a half in front. Should they lose, they would be one and a half. And we're heading home for Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. We'll get to the ball game right after this. Dodger baseball on FSN West 2 is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Gatorade. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Is it in you? and by Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be. It is a glorious day here in San Diego. You couldn't ask for a better day. Prospects of another exciting ball game, and certainly we are assured of yet another sellout at Petco Park. For the Dodgers, among other things tonight, Steve Finley will make his major league debut as a Dodger. He'll be hitting second behind Cesar as tourist. Then you have Milton Bradley, Adrian Beltre, and Sean Green, followed by Jason Worth, Jose Hernandez, David Ross, and Odalis Perez. On the mound for San Diego, 41-year-old David Wells. Last year, he got off to a great start, won 10 of his first 12. He has a back that has bothered him on and off, did rebound in September, but you may remember he had to come out of Game 5 of the World Series because of the stiff back. The left-hander ready, deals a strike, and the count 0-1. And certainly when you are facing David Wells, you expect him to be on the plate. His high and walks two, and he's only done that three times this year. Off speed pitch to his tourists outside, ball one. When you are looking at the top hitters in the league, you see the names Loretta and Beltre quite often, and every now and then his tourist pops up. Little number back to Wells, big left handed fires to get him, so his tourist is retired, one away. And now, as a Dodger, Steve Finley coming up. Steve Finley, born in Tennessee, but he makes his home in nearby Del Mar. And of course, he would live A, by the ocean, and B, by a racetrack. Because Steve Finley, among other things, develops thoroughbred races. He doesn't race them, he just breeds them and then passes them along. So here is Finley waiting in the play, batting 275, takes a strike, and the count on one. Finley going head to head with David Wells is five for 20. He has a home run, a double, and a triple. The Wells into his windup. Big guy comes back 0 1, and it's fouled away. Wells is 6 4 and at least 230. He has a high 80s fastball, a cutter. A uh, change up and a big curveball, and he has complete confidence that he can throw the curveball for strikes at any time during the at bats. The strike two pitch on the way is foul back, still 0 and 2. As big as he is, the back problems have hurt him in the past. He's a little slow, as you can well imagine, 6 4 and at least 230 fielding bunts. And he is one of the easier left-handers, they say, to steal on. 
did pick up four uh, opponents last year. Wells with the Yankees declined a six million dollar option to move on. Finley waiting at the plate and the 0 2 pitch on the way. Fins holds up the pitch outside. No swings is Charlie Relaford and the count one and two. As far as David Wells is concerned, the back bothered him so much that in December he had surgery to repair a herniated disc. Left hand already in the one two pitch. Finley pokes it foul into the box seats off third base. And the count remains one and two. So 39 year old Steve Finley and the Dodgers look to him to cover a lot of ground in center. Milton Bradley has moved over to play right today and is hitting back at Finley. Wells into the windup. David Reddy back he comes and is a shot over first and down the line. So Finley's first at bat as a Dodger is an extra base hit and he is not going to stop at second but they're going to wave him back. Evidently the ball down in the Dodger bullpen and wedged under a bag and the official the umpire down the line indicating the ball was dead Dan Iasonia so back to second goes Steve Finley. Meanwhile David Wells I think was arguing he thought it was a foul ball. So it's interesting that two of the newest Dodgers he stopped Choi and now Steve Finley each come up with a double in their debut game. All right Bruce Boshi has finished his say after Wells had one. So Finley is at second with a double to right and the batter will be Milton Bradley. The ups and downs of a big league player Friday night Bradley two home runs last night a very quiet 0 for 4 struck out twice didn't get the ball out of the infield. So Wells out of a stretch Milton batting right handed and Wells deal slow curveball in for a strike that's that bread and butter pitch of his. Milton Bradley hitting 300 right handed against David Wells nine for 18 including a home run. So he's going to try to pick up Finley at second base the strike one pitch on the way fastball outside and the count one and one. This is the twelfth meeting of the year that means there are seven more left between these two the before in Los Angeles the middle of September and three more later on in San Diego. Now the one one pitch on the way fastball waved at and missed. It wasn't that the fastball was that fast. It was the fact that perfect location outside corner Wells hitting eighty nine on the gun on deck Adrian Beltre. And one of the features we have today three of the top hitters in the league hitting in the daytime. Here's the one two pitch to Milton Bradley swung on popped in the air foul behind the plate. Here comes Hernandez to the screen but it's back in the stands. Crowd still coming in last night the largest crowd this year at Petco forty three thousand seven hundred and twenty six Friday night forty two thousand five hundred and fifty two. We are honored and privileged to have members of the Marine Corps from Camp Pendleton taking in the game as well. One and two the count to Milton Bradley. Finley at second one out. Wells ready and deals just off the plate. That's the way he is. If he's going to miss he won't miss by much. Wells has had quite a few games where he did not walk anybody. 11 times this year he's pitched the game without giving up a walk. Here's the 2 2 pitch coming up to Milton Bradley. Left hand to Wells deals away. Ball three. So he's gone as far as he can go with Bradley. Adrian Beltre waiting on deck. Bradley has really worn him out. Beltre 0 for 2 in the past. So Milton waiting on a full count. Finley with his double at second base. One out. Wells at the belt. Here he comes. Slow curve ball just outside. Body language of Wells like a man who must have just missed it. 
So Bradley is aboard. The Dodgers now have runners at first and second with one out. And Adrian Beltre coming up. Adrian Beltre, one of the top hitters in the league in the daytime. He's batting 402 under God's son. Phil Nevin is hitting 406 and Mark Loretta 398. So he got some heavyweights in the sunshine. Two on, one out. Beltre takes ball one and the count one and oh. So David Wells in a spot of trouble here in the first inning. David looks in to get a sign. He has a record of one and one, even though his record against the Dodgers this year is 0 and 1. Fastball to Beltre in there. The Dodgers beat him back in the middle of April. He gave up eight earned runs in four innings. But you'd have to have a good memory to remember when he beat them. They go back to 1995, the third game of the division series between the Dodgers and Cincinnati, and David Wells won that game for a sweep. The 1 1 pitch, Beltre waves at it. The pitch was on the outside part of the plate. 1 and 2 the count to Adrian Beltre. For Wells, working very hard, this will be his 20th pitch. Beltre hitting better than 340 with runners in scoring position and two out. Well, he's up there now with one out. Finley and Bradley taking their leads. And the fastball is line foul into the seats off first base. One and two. Among other things, the Dodgers finished up July 21 and 7. And of course, today it's a hello to August. Aug 1. For the Dodgers, so far, have had a lot of trouble with left handers. They are 13 and 16 against left hand starters. All right, Wells, a long look in. Dallas Perez resting in the shade of the dugout. In a minute, he'll be center stage. Now the 1 2 pitch. Beltre hits a drive to center. Back on the ball goes Peyton to the track and makes the catch right at the fence. Where is Finley? Finley is standing at third base. They're going to double him up. He was born to be a Brooklyn Dodger. Oh, what an embarrassing moment. Finley obviously forgetting how many outs and he is doubled up on a long fly ball to Jay Payton. No runs, one hit, one left, ouch, no score. Of the first inning, way back in those balmy days of the beloved Brooklyn Dodgers, two fans, one would say to the other, how's it going? And the other fan would say, the Dodgers have two men on. And the other guy would say, which base? Well, the shades of Brooklyn. Not only was Steve Finley confused, Milton Bradley was looking at Finley, so he kept on running. And, of course, Finley was the one who was doubled up off second base. And we go to the bottom of the first, and the pitch inside to Sean Burroughs, one ball and no strike. So we have begun, even though we have begun, kind of on a zany note. Well, Dallas looks in to get a sign from David Ross and the pitch to Burroughs. That's taken for a strike. Sean Burroughs hitting 429 against O'Dallas, who's a break even four and four. But if you've been following the Dodgers at all, you know O'Dallas Perez has pitched a heck of a lot better than that. The 1 1 pitch on the way, lifted to left field, starting in is worth, now moves to his right and makes the catch for the out. One away. Here's the Padre lineup. Sean Burroughs followed by Mark Loretta and then Ryan Quesco. Phil Nevin hits clean up at first. Brian Giles, who has given Perez a bad time, is in right field. Ramon Hernandez behind the plate. Jay Payton in center. Khalil Green at short. And David Wells on the mound. Now, here comes Mark Loretta, a wonderful second baseman and a fine hitter, batting 331. That puts him one point behind Todd Helton. However, still a distant fourth place behind Barry Bonds, who's hitting 354. And Loretta takes ball one, one and oh. Loretta, three for nine in the past against Perez. Odalis ready, left-hander deals inside at the hands. 
We mentioned earlier about players who have done very well in the daytime. Loretta hitting 398 in the daytime. He has the most hits in the league with 136. Adrian Beltre right up there with him. Meanwhile, a chopper to Beltre. Short hops it, straightens up, throws him out. And just like that, we have two down. For the Dodgers, the newcomer Steve Finley out there in center field, flanked by Jason Worth and Milton Bradley. And, of course, Finley with a shelf full of gold gloves. He has four of them. Green, Hernandez, Asturias, and Beltre on the infield. And the battery is Perez and Ross. So Milton, who said he would certainly move to left field or right field, to quote him, whatever it takes to win, and Sean Green is back at first base. The pitch of the plate, Ryan Klesko, a fly ball to center. Finley is right there to make the catch for the third out, and the Padres go out one, two, three. And at the end of an inning, no score. Two-year-old, blonde, blue-eyed, he's got his San Diego sun hat, a Padre jersey, and a little glove. Looking in as Sean Green checks up and takes a strike, and the count on one. Sean batting 264, 14 home runs, 54 runs batted in against David Wells, four for 11. And the pitch is in there for a strike. Of course, all of the Dodger batting averages against Wells sound good because way back in April, they roughed him up for eight runs and 10 hits in four innings. Now the 0-2 pitch, grounded foul past the San Diego dugout. Take a look at this ballpark. 334 down the left field line, 358 to straightaway left. Into the corner, it's 402, 396 to center, and 322 down the right field line. Pitch to green is off the plate. But the one thing about the right field corner, it is difficult. There's also a sand area out there in center field, so the restless little ones can play in the sand, build sand castles while the big guys are going after the real stuff. Green pops one foul off third out of play. The right field corner could prove to be a nightmare for a visiting right fielder because it's all angles. It comes out from the foul pole, then flattens out, then dives back in into the right center field area. Here's the pitch to Sean Green. That's lifted to left field. A long way to come as Kletzko makes a sliding attempt on a foul ball and doesn't get it. So Klesko with a left-hand hitter at the plate, shading him over towards left center. He had to run about a mile, but couldn't quite do it. And Ryan goes on back to his position. One ball and two strikes, they count, to Sean Green. Boy, if you're a baseball fan, it really doesn't get any better than this. A gorgeous day a capacity crowd and a wonderful rivalry. It's 75 degrees here in San Diego. David Wells looks in to get a sign. Now the one two pitch fastball swung on and down as Green just did get a piece of it to foul it off and still one and two. They are everywhere in the stands on the rooftops. They're standing room only. As we said last night, the biggest crowd of the year, 43,700, somewhere around that, I'm sure, today. The one-two pitch to Sean Green, breaking ball hit foul. Oh, Sean is still there. So Green versus Wells. You know, uh, David Wells averages .85 walks per nine innings. That's the best. You have to go back to 1997, Greg Maddox, was averaging 0.7 walks per nine. A note on Maddox. Here's the one two pitch to Green and it's inside that slow curve and the count two and two. Maddox started the game for the Cubs today in pursuit of his 300 lifetime victory. To our knowledge he went out of the game with the Cubs losing so he's not going to pick it up today. Cubs are now winning. Two and two, the count to Sean Green. Wells ready. David's curveball is hooked down the right field line out of play. So David Wells, who grew up in San Diego, he liked to surf. 
He's to hang out at Ocean Beach. He wasn't exactly a blonde surfer kid with rich parents. There was no father in his life. In fact, David didn't meet his real father until he was 22 years old. Meanwhile, this will be the 11th pitch to Sean Green. Fastball got him swinging. So when he has to, he can bring it. He hits 89 to strike out Green, and the battle will be Jason Worth. Don't forget this Saturday, prior to the 7-10 game with the Phillies, watch the stars from the outfield grass, the Hollywood Stars celebrity game. Rob Lowe, Jamie Kennedy, Jimmy Kimmel, George Lopez, among many scheduled to appear. Gates will open at 5-10. Check Dodgers.com or give us a call. And the pitch to Jason Worth in for a strike. And the count on one. Jason hitting 291, seven home runs, 20 RBIs. Wells, who works quickly, comes right back and misses away. One and one. David will tell you that his mom, a single parent, worked low paying jobs to support David and his half sister. The pitch of the plate, that's a strike, and the count one and two. In fact, David also talks about how his mom dated some members of Hell's Angels, and they turned out to be pretty nice men. One and two, the count to Jason Worth. Wells looks in, getting a sign, Worth waiting at the plate. Now the one two pitch inside with a fastball that almost took the belt buckle off, and the count two and two. Growing up, David Wells said, I wanted to be a photographer, a trucker, or maybe a baseball player. But he'd look at those big rigs and think, you know, I'd, I'd be kind of cool to be behind the wheel. But here he is on the mound. 2-2 two -two fastball is swung on and missed. So all he does is strike out green, then he strikes out Worth, and the batter will be Jose Hernandez. So Ramon Hernandez behind the plate, Jose Hernandez at the plate, second inning, no score. The Dodgers and the Padres, Padres trailing the Dodgers by two and a half. And again, remember, seven games left after today between these two rivals. Wells into the windup, slow breaking ball down and away. Ball one, one and oh the count. David Wells, as a kid growing up, even though he grew up here in the San Diego area, huge Yankee fan. The 1 0 pitch is poked to the right side. Great stop by Loretta to get him. The Mark Loretta sliding stop to then throw out Jose Hernandez, and the Dodgers are gone in order. So a couple of magicians up the middle for San Diego, and it's no score. And are trailing the Dodgers by four and a half games. They play the St. Louis Cardinals tonight. Jason Schmidt and Woody Williams. Right now, Phil Nevin leads off, looks at a strike, and the count on one. Nevin hitting 406 in the daytime, 308 overall. He has 15 home runs, 58 runs batted in. Perez rocks and ready. Odalis comes back. Fastball is jolted down the left field line in the corner. Over to get it is worth coming off the fence. Nevin on a bad knee, but he makes it into second base with a leadoff double. So Phil Nevin rips one into the left field corner. Nevin not running well at all. You may remember. He went on the DL back on the 5th of July had frayed cartilage in his right knee and he is still able to get two on that ball hit in the corner. So now Giles Hernandez and Peyton trying to pick him up. Giles batting 281 out of a stretch goes Odalis fastball is popped up. Going out is his tourist worth lost it. Now he has recovered it and makes the catch. On that fly ball, Jason threw his hands in the air as if say, where is it? And his tourist started to go out to help, and then Worth finally picked it off and comes up and makes the catch. I'll say one thing with this brilliant blue sky and with all the shirt sleeve crowd, is standing out there, it's not very easy to pick up that ball. 
If you can't find it in the gap from the lower to the upper deck, boy, you're in a lot of trouble. And then you have a tendency to lose it a second time. So here's the catcher, Ramon Hernandez, right hand batter, and Perez pitch in for a strike, and the count on one. Ramon Hernandez, he was out. He had a strained left knee. He went out since the 20th of June, now back, hitting 269. He has eight home runs, 27 runs batted in, swings, doesn't get the next one, and the count 0 and 2. He came off the DL the 26th of July and promptly hit his eighth home run against the Giants. So Ramon Hernandez at the plate. Nevin at second, one out, no score, bottom of the second. Ramon Hernandez from Caracas in Venezuela and takes outside. One ball and two strikes. He was originally signed by the Oakland A's 10 years ago. So Ramon, well put together, he's 215 pounds. He has always had a bit of a weight problem. One ball and two strikes. Here comes O'Dallas and is a chopper up along third to Beltre, who backhand straightens up to get him. With the ball hit ahead of him, Nevin had nowhere to go. And with two down, the batter will be Jay Payton. Jay Payton has been really struggling. However, he got a base hit his first at bat last night to drive in Phil Nevin. So Payton coming up with Nevin at second. Two down, second inning, no score. Bruce Boshi at the helm for nine years as the San Diego skipper. Now O'Dallas ready in the fastball outside, ball one. One and oh, the count to Jay, a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech, although he was born in Zanesville, Ohio, and still lives there. A first round pick by the New York Mets 10 years ago. The 1 0 pitch on the way is taken for a strike. We mentioned it before. That must have been some club Georgia Tech had. The shortstop was Peyton's roommate, Nomar Garcia Parra. And the catcher on the club was Jason Baratek. And by the way, Garcia Parra got a base hit and a run batted in today for the Chicago Cubs. Seems kind of strange to say it. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Peyton, the right hand hitter, gets out of the way of it. And the count goes to two balls and one strike. On deck is the brilliant young shortstop down here, Khalil Green. Two out, Nevin at second. No score in the ball game, but we're just starting. Now Perez at the belt. The 2 1 fastball is hit down to his tourist. Cesar is up with it, guns it over to Green. So a wasted leadoff double for Nevin. No runs ahead, a man left, and at the end of two, no score. Dodger Baseball on FSN West 2 is brought to you by Dodge. Grab life by the horn, Dodge. And by the Lexus Golden Opportunity Event, now through September 7th. No score as we go to the third inning here at Petco Park. David Wells ready to David Ross who bunts in the air and it's off the glove in foul ground. So just a no ball one strike count. Well, we mentioned David Wells has a little trouble with bunts and that one got away and he wound up right on the steps of the Dodger dugout and of course who would be there to say something to him but Jose Lima as if to say hey nice try big guy. Just a few moments ago, it was goosebump time here at Petco, and it had nothing to do with baseball. They were playing the, the song of the United States Marine Corps, and the entire ballpark stood at attention with the Marines. Meanwhile, Ross fouls it away, and the count 0 and 2. And with the entire crowd standing on a roar and rhythmical applause, the Marines at attention. And it was indeed goosebumps. And you realize just what has kept America being as great as it is, and these young men sacrificing themselves in Iraq. Uh, another foul ball, and the count still 0 and 2. It was not only Iraq. Oh, 
No balls and two strikes to David Ross. Then Odalis Perez, Cesar is tourist. Each side with one hit. Wells comes back with a fastball, a check swing. No swing, says Dan Iasonia. And the count one and two. Ross last night struck out twice and walked. The night before, however, he had two scoring fly balls. Three home runs, nine RBIs, and the one two pitch on the way. And David, it's a chopper back to Wells. And Dave just flips it over to first for the out. So what Wells did was take a base hit away because Ross hit it hard right back up the middle. So one away, and the batter will be Odalis Perez. By the way, the Dodgers will come home after the game. Tomorrow is an off day. And then Tuesday night with the Pittsburgh Pirates, Brad Penny will make his debut as a Dodger. Penny with a record of eight and eight. And the pitch, meanwhile, the Perez is right. Brad's earned run average 3.1. And actually, since the All-Star break, better than that, 2.8. So we'll take a look at him Tuesday night. Hope you will, too. Line drive, base hit into left field for Odalis Perez. For Odalis, he has four hits and one RBI. Here's the upcoming schedule when we do come home. Three with the Pirates, all three on FSN West 2. Then Friday night with the Phillies, same story. And then UPN 13, Saturday and Sunday, but different times. 6.30 Tuesday and Wednesday. Noon Thursday and then 630 Friday for the pregame show seven o'clock on Saturday and a day game on Sunday. The pitch to his tourist low ball one one and oh. His tourist hit back to the box in the first inning. So Dallas Perez following in the footsteps of Kaz is she. Is she hitting his first major league home run last night. Perez settles for a base hit. Wells ready and deals. His tourist bunts over to get it is Wells. Off balance throw is just in time. So when you are as big as he is, 6'4, 245, you can expect the Dodgers will try to bunt and move the big guy around. He almost made the play on Ross's bunt and then got him on a comebacker. And he just did close play. Nip is tourist. Is Odalis Perez takes second with two out, and the batter is Steve Finley. Well, Finley started out on the right foot and finished up on his left foot. He doubled a right in the first inning and then forgot how many outs there were. And when Beltre fly deep to center, Steve was doubled off second base. So Finley waiting, well set at the belt. Now the left handed delivers and Finley takes a strike. Finley with his double is 6 for 21 against David Wells. No score, top of the third. A Dallas Perez at second with two out and 0 and 1 to Steve Finley. Strike one pitch on the way. Wells fastball. That's whacked to left field, but Klesko has room. Ryan goes back and makes the catch one foot on the track. So the Dodgers leave Perez. Good inning for fielding for David Wells. And at the end of two and a half innings, no score. No score as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Khalil Green will start it off. Then it'll be David Wells and Sean Burroughs. Khalil Green, who has really dazzled at shortstop, he's become a big crowd favorite down here. He was born in Butler, Pennsylvania, but he lives in Florida, and he went to school at Clemson. So the right-hand hitting shortstop, batting 263, half a dozen home runs, 38 runs batted in, and takes off the plate, ball one. Two years ago, he won the Dick Hauser Award as the College Baseball Player of the Year. He was also an All-American. Rounds one foul outside of third. And the count one ball and one strike. Green coming out of high school was not drafted. But the St. Louis Cardinals approached him with a six-figure offer if he'd moved to catcher. 
Well, he refused. Then he was drafted by the Cubs. Turn that down. Swings, chops another one foul outside of third. Finally, he signed with the Padres in June two years ago. He's long, not that tall. He's only 5'10", but he's 200 pounds, and they say he can bench press 315 pounds. The one-two pitch in green takes low, ball two, two and two. As we mentioned before, and I guess it is worth mentioning, somewhat of a strange name, Khalil, K-H-A-L-I-L. It means gift of God in his Baha'i faith. He grounds one hard, backhanded by Beltre, and from the line threw him out. Oh, what a magnificent play by Adrian Beltre. He didn't have a chance to even set, and yet unerringly, from the foul line back a third, he made right on the money a quick throw to Sean Green. Boy, what a fine player. Adrian Beltre. Wow. One away. And now here comes David Wells. Wells, who is known for fun and games, swings, hits a one hopper, knocked down by Green, and he'll take it to the bag. We just want to mention that David Wells gave $50,000 to his alma mater. That's Point Loma High School. He did it for kids with special needs. So he's a big guy, a fun-loving guy, and a huge heart as well. Two down here in the third inning. And the batter will be Sean Burrows. So the Dodger defense that has really been something to be proud of. And today shows yet again the play by Beltre and now that diving stop by Green. Sean Burrows flied to left field in the first inning. Sean waiting, big left hand hitter, takes down and away, ball one. Burrows three for eight in the pass. Out of Long Beach. And the 1 0 pitch on the way. Sean, it's a hard ground ball. The shortstop is Turris. That'll be that. So they go quickly to the Padres, thanks to the gloves of the Dodgers. And at the end of three, no score. Here's our Aflac trivia question for the day. David Wells pitched a perfect game May the 17th, 1998. Who was the last Dodger? to pitch a perfect game. I will give you the answer in a little while. Right now, David Wells going to work against Milton Bradley, Adrian Beltre, and Sean Green. Bradley walked in the first inning, 0-1. Milton batting 283. Career high, 13 home runs, 49 runs batted in. David Wells, and he's part of that trivia question about pitching a perfect game. When Randy Johnson faced David Wells, each the possessor of a perfect game. They'd opposed each other only the first time since 1993. In between that time, Johnson won 169 games, Wells 145. Very rare to have two pitchers who pitch a perfect game to go against each other. And we'll tell you about them in a while. A little pop fly. A gathering of the clan, and it's Loretta. One away. The best we can tell in research, when Wells faced Johnson, two pitchers with perfect games, it was only the fifth meeting of perfect game pitchers since 1900. Now Adrian Beltre with that long fly ball out to center. Finley doubled off second base. Chopper foul. 0 and 1. Adrian batting 329. 
twenty nine home runs seventy four runs batted in. Jim Tomei will be at Dodger Stadium with the Phillies next weekend leads the league with thirty one home runs. You know Beltre is right back of Albert Pujols in total bases. So his name is generously sprinkled throughout all the offensive categories. Foul ball, 0 and 2. Beltre has played 16 games since the All Star break, and over that stretch, batting 411. Meanwhile, Jose Hernandez, Cesar Estoril look on from the Dodger dugout. Ball one. Forty one year old David Wells, born in Torrance, lives in Clearwater. And that's fouled away. Sounded almost like a crack bat, but uh, Beltre was testing it. During uh, David Wells stretch with the Toronto Blue Jays that would be from 87 through 92 show you how fierce a competitor he can be even though he gives you the attitude of just one great big party waiting to happen. Former Blue Jays manager Cito Gaston came to the mound to remove him from a game and he asked Wells for the ball. And Wells said, "Go get it," and he threw the ball into left field. Curveball, and it's a leaping catch by Loretta. So Beltre straightens out a curveball, but Loretta's at the other end of it. Two down. This is typical, seeing fine defensive plays behind pitchers who have good control. That happens all the time. Everyone on his toes. So with two down in the fourth, the batter is Sean Green, who struck out in the second inning. Ball one. By the way, you might forget five years ago when Toronto finally decided to jettison David Wells. They sent Roger Clemens to the Yankees to get well. Ball two, two and all. Sean Green batting 264, 14 home runs, 54 runs batted in. And a fly ball down the line. Plesco in pursuit. It's going to go into the seats. Two and one. As hitters so often do after fouling that pitch off first thing Sean Green did was to ask Doug Eddings was that a strike. Doug Eddings five years in the big leagues. He said if he wasn't an umpire he'd be a secret service agent. Three and one. Crazy thought. He asked the umpire, he wanted to be a secret agent. Was that a strike? And they'll say it's a secret. There's ball. Come back. Come back, Sean. Well, you asked him a little while ago, did I swing at a strike? Jim Tracy is hot in the dugout. Take a look. Wow. Wow. And it was bad glove action by Hernandez. You know they have an expression veteran catchers frame a pitch but he didn't frame it at all. Now back. 
Can we see that one more time and just look at Ramon Hernandez mitt. I think that's what really got the Dodgers in the dugout. Now watch the mitt. He turns and backhands it. You're supposed to catch that the other way and try and pull it on the corner. Backhanding it really made it look like ball four. All right, three and two. How back. No score. Top of the fourth. Two down. Beltre losing a base hit on a leaping catch by Mark Loretta. Tuesday night the Dodgers play Pittsburgh and they're going to see oh, another Perez Oliver Perez high fly ball down the line Klesko figures to get under it this time and does. All right the Dodgers are gone in the fourth inning Sean is still upset thinking he had walked and at the end of three and a half innings no score. No score, bottom of the fourth. Remember our Aflac trivia question about David Wells and a perfect game. Who is the last Dodger to turn one in? Sure. Andy Koufax against the Cubs, September of 1965. Mark Loretta grounded to third in the first inning. Shows Bunn takes a strike. We mentioned only five times since 1900. Did you have two pitchers? with perfect games go against each other and David Wells and Randy Johnson that's a line drive to center for a base hit the other perfect game pitchers who matched up against each other Jim Bunning of the Phillies and Sandy Koufax in 1966 Tom Browning of the Reds and Dennis Martinez of Montreal in 1991. Dennis Martinez and Kenny Rogers in 1996. And for good measure, Kenny Rogers and David Wells twice. So here is Klesko. Bunts. Perez only play is for Green. So Ryan Klesko sacrifices. How many times has Ryan sacrificed this year? You guessed it. That's the first. So they leave it up to Phil Nevin, who with all of his other credentials is the number three hitter in day games. Who do you think is the number one hitter in day games? Yep, Barry Bonds. All Bonds is doing in the daytime is hitting 483. Can you believe that? Breaking ball whacked into left field. Here comes Loretta. And Worth's throw is not in time. And the Padres take a one to nothing lead. So the big guy certainly helped out and we mean Ryan Klesko sacrifices for his first time this year and then Nevin comes up he's two for two today four for six and in the series four for ten and remember he missed the two run home run but Ryan Klesko's bunt set it up talking to Dave Magadan so Nevin at first and here's Brian Giles one nothing Padres. Big game of course Dodgers win their three and a half in front Padres win they're only one and a half back Ball one Woody Williams of the Cardinals Jason Schmidt for the Giants tonight one ball no strikes Brian fly to right field in the second inning Bruce Boshi has his club in front 1-0. The rubber game of the series and the chant from the big crowd beat L.A. Two and oh to Brian Giles. Fly ball going down the line foul and out of play for Odalis Perez 
he realizes when he goes to the ballpark it's going to be push against shove. 15 of his 19 starts have been decided by two runs or less. 10 have been one run games and five wound up in extra innings. Two and one. Good fastball two and two. Giles hitting 280. 15 home runs 60 RBIs and he's another fellow who has come home. He's from El Cajon. Thirty three years old. He has Nevin at first only one out. One nothing Padres. Two and two. Giles well put together 5'10", 205 pounds. He loved to play football. He was a tailback at high school but just not big enough to think about playing anymore. Three and two the count. And that's a fly ball back a third is Turris getting in front of Beltre to make the catch. Whoa what a play by Cesar. And you have to have tremendous concentration to make that play. He had big Jason Worth coming one way, Adrian Beltre going the other, and all of a sudden, he was the makings of a sandwich. And yet, his tourist just concentrated on the ball, not worrying about a collision, and backhanded it. Great play. And then immediately turns and gets it back into Alex Cora. Boy, that is a, a gutsy play. Two down. And the batter now, Ramon Hernandez, who grounded to third in the second inning. One ball and no strikes. Nevin is at first. You're almost surprised they hold him on. He's had knee surgery. He certainly doesn't run very well. Green holding the corner. Nevin has not been involved, not been involved in any kind of a running play at all. And that's foul back out of play. Two and one. So Ramon Hernandez the Venezuelan who came up with the A's he was with them for five years hit 273 last year with 21 home runs for Oakland this time foul down the line so he has some sock and he was a very very impressive young catcher during the first series between the Dodgers and the Padres way back in April I mean he really caught your eye. Then he banged up the knee and what happened was from what I understand there was a lot of second guessing about Ramon Hernandez saying he was afraid to block the plate. They always said he'd back off. So what does he do. You sure he made up his mind. All right I'll show him I can block the plate. He did hurt his knee went on the DL. Three and two Bruce Boshi of course. Uh, a rough and tumble catcher for many years in the big league. His brother was a catcher that must run in the family. So Nevin will be going with a full count. Fouled away. Ramon Hernandez. Facing Odalis Perez. Ramon's 28. Three and two. Chopper wide of third. Beltre is on it. Over to Green who does a little toe dance to stay on the bag. However, Padres get a run. Great play by Cesar Estorres. And it's one nothing San Diego.
David Wells now staked to a one to nothing lead and it'll be Jason Worth Jose Hernandez and David Ross slow curveball but he missed ball one David Wells is a collector among other things he owns three Babe Ruth signed baseball one and oh now the way as David says two of them have him on it one is on the sweet spot and one is a 1930 team ball it has Lou Gehrig on the sweet spot but he also has a house full of other Bay memorabilia one and one squirted foul one and two when David Wells was pitching the first inning for the Yankees against the Cleveland Indians that's back on June 28 1997 he wore an old baseball cap that had been worn by Babe Ruth he had paid thirty five thousand dollars for the cap one and two right three on the inside corner so down goes Jason one out and the batter will be Jose Hernandez Wells only wore that Babe Ruth hat by the way one inning you know what I remember about Babe Ruth one time I was a little kid in the grandstands in the polo ground and all of a sudden there was a big commotion in the upper deck. And like any other kid I wanted to find out what was going on I ran over and there he was. Babe Ruth in a big polo coat. And here's the thing I remember the most. He did not sign autographs. What he did he just said you know easy kids easy and he reached in his pocket. He must have taken out a hundred business cards and his signature was on the cards he just handed them out and I got one I have no idea where it is today no idea foul ball but that was pretty cool I mean you didn't get involved with ink or pens or pencils or anything you just said right here Babe Ruth handing out his signature Well, Jose Lima he's got some numbers on his hat and I guess they'll stay there for the rest of the year all of those former Dodgers their numbers have written on Jose's cap for a while anyway what would that cap be worth one and two to Hernandez one nothing San Diego fifth inning out the way. Jose robbed of a hit by Mark Loretta. Meanwhile, it's Eric Gagne time to sit in the dugout. And right behind Lima time. And later on, Eric will go to the pen. Stop. One and two. Change up. Oh, like a letter at home. Thank you so much. So a straight change, 70 miles an hour. And Jose's eyes lit up on that one. That is the third hit for the Dodgers. And the batter is David Ross. Ross tried to bunt on Wells, which is a pretty good idea. Ball went off Wells' glove in foul ground. Then David hit it hard and right back at Wells. Ross batting 174. We mentioned that Tuesday night the Dodgers play Pittsburgh and Brad Penny will make his debut. He's going to go up against Oliver Perez of Pittsburgh and maybe you saw it in the paper. There was a quote from Chipper Jones of Atlanta about Oliver Perez that really would get your attention. That's his fine. Chipper Jones said. Oliver Perez is the closest thing in the league to Randy Johnson. He is for real. That was Chipper Jones. So 
Penny draws a tough hombre Tuesday night. Meanwhile, Odalis Perez waiting on deck. One out, one nothing Padres, top of the fifth. So David Ross having a tough time. He did have two scoring fly balls Friday night. So he is 0 for 7, however, in the series. And the batter now, Odalis Perez, single left field in the third inning. It's down to Loretta. Oh, that'll do it. No runs, one hit, a man left, and David Wells walks off as Odalis Perez walks back, and it's one nothing San Diego. Back of left field, there's the Western Metal Supply Company. Up on the top floor is a restaurant, and they have some wonderful lockers and clothing of former greats like Randy Jones and Dave Winfield. Tony Gwynn. There's a locker for former president and general manager Buzzy Bavese. There's one for Jerry Coleman, the fine announcer here. It's a nice touch. Always good to bring back the past so the folks here can enjoy it. Jay Payton will start it off. Ball one. Payton grounded a short in the second inning. Interesting, he had such a big year last year, and he is struggling this year. Last year, career highs and home runs 28, RBIs 89, runs scored 93. This year, he has four home runs, 39 RBIs, and he's hitting 240. Meanwhile, taking in the ball game, former Hall of Famer Dave Winfield. Actor Samuel Jackson is here taken in the game. One nothing Padres. A drive down the left field line hooking foul. Two and two. Peyton 0 for 1 followed by Khalil Green. And then David Well. Odalis with a record of four and four. Fastball, line drive, base hit. So Gay Payton, a line drive single on the fastball to put a runner aboard with nobody out, and Khalil Green coming up. Khalil Green, half a dozen home runs. You have the pitcher David Wells on deck. One nothing Padres, fifth inning. Nobody out. Ball one. Green 0 for 4 so far in his young career against Perez. Although he was robbed of a hit on a wonderful throw by Adrian Beltre. Pitch number 50 coming up for O'Dallis. And a drive straightaway center. Finley is there. So one out. And here comes David Wells. We talked moments ago about David Wells and his perfect game. It was the 15th perfect game in history, and it occurred May the 17th, 1998. He was pitching for the Yankees. He beat Minnesota four to nothing. And that, of course, brought the Dodgers into the picture because it was the first, uh, first perfect game at Yankee Stadium since Don Larson. Did it to the Dodgers in game five of the 1956 World Series. 
And you know what's really interesting? Wells attended the same school as Larson, Point Loma High in San Diego. Wells with the bat has four sacrifices and on deck you have Sean Burroughs. One and oh. Missed it. One and one. To look ahead when the Dodgers come up in the sixth inning is Torres, Finley, and Bradley. Beltre still looking bunt. Green holding a corner on Peyton. Ball two. One run, four hits for the Padres. No runs, three hits for the Dodgers. Dodgers have left three. The Padres have left two. And the bunt is down, fielded by Perez. So Wells does his job, gets the bunt down just like Klesko did. And when Klesko got it down, it meant a run. So don't forget, the Dodgers host the Phillies. That'll be one week from today at 110. All kids 14 and under in attendance receive a free Dodger lunchbox. Compliments of Farmer John. So visit Dodgers.com. Or give us a call 323 2241 hit. So as Eric Gagne looks on, one to nothing Padres. And here is Burroughs going the other way twice, fly to left, grounded to short. Fastball strike. Burroughs, 296 batting average. He's hitting 333 against Perez. Three for nine. Look out. One and one. Jay Payton at second. Mark Loretta on deck. One ball, one strike. Twelfth meeting of the year between the two clubs. The Dodgers have won seven of eleven. After today, they have seven more to play. Four in Los Angeles and three in San Diego. Fastball. Great stop by Alex Cora. Oh, wow. I should say Jose Fernandez, pardon me. What a great stop. So Jose Hernandez makes a brilliant play and takes a hit away and more importantly, a run away. And it's still 1-0 San Diego. On this day in 1957, Gil Hodges hit a grand slam home run, one of the 14 he hit as a Dodger. What a record he had. For seven years, he had 100 or more RBIs. 11 years, he had 20 home runs or more. Should be in the Hall of Fame, but isn't. Let's go back to this one. Well, it's still one to nothing San Diego as we go to the sixth inning. His tourist twice hits back to the box, 0 for 2. Strike. So David Wells, same old David, he just throws strikes. He walked one man, that was Milton Bradley, in the first inning. 0 and 1. Curveball, hit to right. Giles, right there. So as tourist flies to ride one away and Steve Finley coming up Finley the only Dodger to reach second base and then ran the Dodgers out of the inning on Beltre's long fly ball. He thought it was for the third out and it was only the second. Wells getting the first pitch for a strike to 14 of the 19 batters he's faced. 
And a drag bunt foul. Got a slow curveball, not a bad pitch to bunt either. Now last year, Steve Finley just wore the Padres out. He hit 393 against San Diego with four home runs and 14 RBIs in the 19 games. 0 and 1. Off the corner, one and one. Wells came in six and six, but four and one in his last six games. And that's banged to center. So it's the same old Finley as far as San Diego is concerned. Wore him out last year, and he's two for three today. And the batter will be Milton Bradley. And now timeout for the moment. And there'll be a meeting at the mound. Darren Balsley on his way out, the pitching coach, to talk to David Wells. Scott Linebrink down in the pen. The trio for the Padres, they nicknamed him. It's not a great nickname, but down here, the trio of doom. Scott Linebrink followed by Akinori Otsuka and then Trevor Hoffman. The Boshi trying to nurse a one to nothing lead. And the batter Milton Bradley. Milton walk popped up 0 for 1 has had success against Wells in the past. And promptly hits that into left field for a base hit in front of Clesco. So the Dodgers have runners at first and second with one out and Adrian Beltre coming up. Beltre could easily be two for two. He is 0 for two. Jay Payton went to the track in center field to make a catch in the first inning. And then Mark Loretta made a leaping catch going up the ladder to take a hit away in the fourth inning. So another meeting and Beltre waits. You know David Wells we were talking about his perfect game he did a nice thing. He distributed approximately three dozen diamond rings worth seventy five thousand dollars to his teammates coaches and members including including the diamond ring to George Steinbrenner. There'll be no ring for Bruce Boshi right now because the big guy's coming out in a position all pitchers hate. He could win it. He could lose it. He could have nothing to do with it but he does go out leading one nothing and we'll be back. Wells was furious when he saw Bruce Boshi coming out finding out that's it you're out of the ball game. However at least he gave Boshi the ball. Remember we told you earlier when he was with Toronto and Cito Gaston said give me the ball. He threw the ball into left field and said go get it. But he is older and wiser. But the competitive fire still burn and the big guy goes out. There's no pat on the back nothing. So it'll be up to Scott Linebrink. The first of three. Scott Linebrink trying to hold on to a one to nothing lead. He's six two, a 200 pounder out of Austin Texas. He still lives there. Went to school at Southwest Texas State and originally was a number two pick by the Giants seven years ago. He came up with the Giants. Then he spent some time with the Astros right up to last year and now with San Diego. So Adrian Beltre against Linebrink. He is 0 for 4. You have Finley at second, Bradley at first, one out, one nothing Padres, 4-1. So Adrian could easily be two for two, zero oh for two. Line break, 
five and one with the league and an earned run average of one point nine. He's tough. Fastball strike. He hit ninety two on the gun. His strikeout to walk ratio is three to one. One and one. Fastball fouled away. One and two the count. You have Finley who singled at second. You have Bradley who singled at first. In the first inning, Finley doubled and Bradley walked, but they ran themselves out of the inning. One and two. Foul back. When the Astros sent line brink to the Giants, the Astros felt that the Giants had rushed him to the majors. Then they moved him over here to San Diego, and they're bringing him along very nicely, and he's five and one. He'll be 28 in a couple of days. Two and two. Line Brink with a fastball that can be clocked up to 96. He has a slider and a splitter plus a changeup. He taught himself the splitter when he was at Concordia, Texas University. Got him. So line brink comes in and strikes out Beltre. He thought it was off the plate, but Doug Edding said no. So now here is Sean Green. In Sean's first at bat when he struck out, took 11 pitches. Then his second at bat, it took eight pitches. Ball one. So now let's see how many it takes in his third at bat. Remember how unhappy Green was when he was called out on strikes in the second inning after thinking he had gotten ball four. One and oh. So typical of game pro Dallas Perez Dodgers have to put an ad in the paper to get a run and he's down one nothing two on two out and a shot up the middle base hit so here comes Finley to score on his way to third is Bradley and Sean Green ties it up and somewhere in the dressing room, David Wells is very unhappy. By the way, Green was one for one against Line Brink, and it was a home run. A Sean, a clutch base hit up the middle. Now with two out runners at first and third, the batter is Jason Worth. Jason Worth against Wells struck out twice. So Dallas is even. 1-1. One, one. Line Brink with a runner at third, so we always look it up. He has two wild pitches. That's a strike off speed. On one. So he starts him with the slider. Worth with seven home runs. Dodgers won, Padres won in the sixth on the heels of last night's tough game, 3 2. So Milton Bradley, a tiebreaker at third, and Sean Green at first, one and one.
One ball and two strikes to Jason Worth. Worth has power, but he's a typical young free swinger. He has 20 RBIs. But in about 120 at bats, he has struck out 35 times. Struck out twice today. Just off the plate. What was this crowd into this game? Every pitch. So Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. Bradley at third, Green at first. In a 1 1 tie. Foul ball down the line, out of play in the crowd. Dodgers and Pirates. Tuesday night, Brad Penny and Oliver Perez. See you at Dodger Stadium. Dodgers earlier this year beat Pittsburgh all three meetings in Pittsburgh. Two and two. Foul back. On deck, the fellow who has certainly kept the Padres to only one run. Jose Hernandez who made that brilliant play in the fifth inning to take a hit away from Burroughs and a second run for San Diego. Worth now will be ready for the eighth pitch in this at bat. So three and two and Green will be going from first. Three and two. Green goes and a fly ball into right center. Giles is there. So the Dodgers get one run on three hits. Steve Finley led off the inning and eventually scored and we're one one in tie in a game where Odalis Perez has not given up a walk and when you don't give up a walk the fielders are on their toes case in point Adrian Beltre taking a hit away from Khalil Green a great running catch by his tourist between Beltre and Worth and a heart stopping play by Jose Hernandez so it's 1 1 bottom of the six and Odalis now Preparing to pitch to Loretta, Klesko, and Nevin. Strike. Mark Loretta grounded out, singled, and scored the Padre run in the fourth inning. Aided and abetted by Big Ryan Klesko's sacrifice in the fourth inning. Curveball. 0 and 2. Loretta batting 332. Uh, he has picked up a point. As you can see, this has become a true pitcher's ballpark, even a little tougher than Dodger Stadium. Foul ball down the line, out of play. So Mark Loretta hitting 400 in the daytime and 332 all told. Loretta not only a fine hitter he also brings a good glove last year he led all National League second baseman in a fielding average and a fly ball to center deep but playable Finley is there sunglasses on top of the hat the one away and now Ryan Klesko. Klesko flied to center in the first inning and for the first time this year sacrificed and it paid off. 
He bunted Loretta to second and Nevin's base hit scored him. Ryan with four home runs, 42 runs batted in. Big curveball for a strike. 0 and 1. Fresco has had a lot of problems. He hurt his shoulder. Back in May. He also strained the rib cage. But now, as we begin August, he's just about 100%. One and one. Curveball foul back. In fact, Ryan described it by saying it's as if he were trying to put on a vest and it was too tight. That's the way it felt trying to swing the bat. He did have a 10 game hitting streak in July. One and two. One run six hits for the Dodgers one run four hits for the Padres. Fastball. So a couple of breaking balls and a fastball, and it's still one and two. For San Diego, this is their 14th straight game against Western Division teams, and they're doing pretty well. They've won nine of 13. Fastball got him looking. So those early curveballs really set him up. He got a fastball to foul off, and then deer in the headlights looking at the fastball. So be sure to join us tonight at 10 highlights of all of today's sports action. We'll present the Southern California Sports Report, complete Dodger coverage, and a lot more. The Southern California Sports Report tonight at 10. Two down in the sixth inning. Interesting to get Klesko looking. That's the first strikeout for Odalis Perez. One ball and no strikes to Phil Nevin, who has a double and a single. Coming into the game, Nevin was five for 14 with two home runs against Perez. How about that being drafted ahead of those others Jeter Kendall and Johnson Astros picked him number one went to Cal State Fullerton well in this kind of a game three and oh I don't think there's anything at all automatic about Phil Nevin taking the pitch they might green light him if he likes the location otherwise just let it go by if it's not a pitch he can drive. After all, he hit 41 home runs here one year. Oh, great curveball. Hmm. Oh, Dallas breaks off a beauty. And they count three and one. Meanwhile, Jay Payton looking on. Time. Nevin was originally a Dodgers number three pick at a high school El Dorado in Placentia but he decided to go to Cal State Fullerton. That's another strike. So from three and oh to three and two. Perez to get Loretta on a fly ball and strike out Klesko and Nevin. And at the end of six, a 1 1 tie. Dodger Baseball on FSN West 2 is brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. And by Nextel. Nextel, done. Call 1 800 Nextel 9. 
Point Loma Lighthouse showing the way to Petco Park. 1 1, seventh inning. Jose Hernandez, David Ross, and Odalis Perez against Scott Linebrink and a fly ball to center to Jay Payton. So Jose didn't hang around. He's one for three. And we have an out here in the seventh inning. In the Dodger bullpen, Wilson Alvarez begins to warm up. And the batter will be David Ross. Jason Grabowski comes out to bat for Odalis Perez. So for Odalis, another one of those games. Foul ball out of play. I mean, he has to be, without a doubt, one of the most frustrated pitchers in the league. Right now, this will be the 16th game, probably decided by two runs or less. This will be maybe the 11th of his games, a one-run game. They just keep plugging along. And, of course, he's matured enough now. A year or two ago, he'd pop off about not enough hitting, no more. Now he feels okay. I've done my job. I, I've pitched six innings, kept us in the game one-one. About all I can do. That's going to be a strike. So David Ross having a tough time. Two down in the seventh inning. Line break has struck out two. And now here is Jason Grabowski batting for Odalis Perez. Grabowski hitting 250 he has a half a dozen home runs. As a pinch hitter, he has 10 hits, including a home run, and four runs batted in. One and oh. Two and oh. Uh, Dallas Press made 72 pitches. Foul tip. So 72 pitches, that's exactly 12 pitches per inning. That'd be only 108 pitches for nine, so he certainly wasn't weary, but the Dodgers on the road are pressing to get a run. And that's stroke to center, but it's going to go right into Peyton's miss. <laughs> So Grabowski hits it hard, but he lines out. For Odalis Perez, it's another one of those hang in there, and it's a 1-1 time. We have a 1-1 tie here in Petco, and the rubber game of the three-game series. The Dodgers either will be three and a half in front of the Padres or one and a half, and the capacity crowd on a gorgeous day. Oh yeah, even babies in daddy's arms take me out to the ball game and how honored and privileged we are to salute the Marines from nearby Camp Pendleton. Dodger fans here. Great rivalry. And we must point out as well, wonderfully behaved crowds, big crowds, capacity crowds, but they came to enjoy. And it's fun to be here with them. Now we'll find out how much fun it'll be for Wilson Alvarez and the Dodgers. Bottom of the seventh inning in a 1 1 tie. So Dallas Perez went six innings, allowed one run and four hits. He was absolutely brilliant. Perez did not walk a batter. And he struck out two of the last two men that he faced, Plesko and Nevin. So now Wilson Alvarez, sometimes a starter, and from the looks of things from now on, a lot of times in relief. A record of six and three. Brian Giles flied to right and he lifted that top fly with Beltre and his tourists going out and Worth coming in and 
this church made a great play. Hopped in the air, foul. Beltre hoping it'll come back, but it won't. One and one to Brian Giles. Well, the second man of their threesome, Akinori Otsuka, the boy from Chiba in Japan, who came in to relieve briefly last night, struck out David Ross, set and gave the ball in to Trevor Hoffman, who got the save. One and one. Fastball hit foul. One and two the count to Brian Giles batting 279. Giles had a stretch from 1999 through last year. We had 30 or more doubles. He has 14 doubles so far this year. Look at fastball really took off. One and two. Giles with Ramon Hernandez getting back on him. Two and two, the boy from Granite Hills High School. High chopper, Alvarez, the veteran, calmly makes the play. One out in the seventh inning. And before a capacity crowd, Ramon Hernandez. Ramon, born and still lives in Caracas, in Venezuela. Pretty good contact hitter. Grounded out twice today. Only struck out 21 times. Well over 200 plate appearances. All right, four and one. Meanwhile, Brent Maine just taking in the action. They also serve who only sit and wait. So the world takes a turn, and all of a sudden, there are two guys from Venezuela going head to head in San Diego. One and one. Ball two. Remember Mark Kotze, who played here for several years? He went to the A's, and that brought Hernandez and Terrence Long here. Ball three. And if he follows his pattern, as Alvarez works on him, Ramon normally hits much better the second half of the season. Three and one. Fast ball. So with one out, the walk to Hernandez will bring up Gay Payton. Say a reminder, get ready for Max Kellerman. He comes to Fox Sports Net. I Max weeknights at 10:30 only on FSN West. Jay Payton grounded to short, single to center, one for two. Well, if we stayed here for a week, I would think we would set a record every day. We had the record last night, 43-7. It's even bigger today. Now back the paid attendance today forty four thousand and fifty six. I mean they are everywhere including standing room only. And on the hill. The grassy area in right center. In the grassy area in left center there's uh, a lot of action going on there. There's another game with the kids. One one tie in the seven. 
when you have the top two teams in the division this is the kind of a game you expect. On one. One ball one strike. Alvarez worked against Colorado. The Dodgers trying to maintain their advantage. Alvarez against Colorado pitched brilliantly went five innings and allowed just two runs and picked up a victory. Giants are playing tonight. Right. Alvarez saved the Dodgers in Colorado. Remember they they lost seven to two and five to four and then Wilson shut him down and the Dodgers won a three two. Now they're asking Alvarez to salvage game three of the series and make it two out of three. That's a strike. The gay Payton grumbling with plate umpire Doug Eddings. And Eddings comes right back at him. So several hitters annoyed today. And the best you can say is it's been equal grumbling. Remember Sean Green. Remember Adrian Beltre. And now Jay Payton. All right. Two down. Hernandez at first. And the batter is Khalil Green. Green robbed of a hit by Beltre and flied to center. Fastball, strike one. Coming out on deck, Rich Aurelia to bat for line brink. Two out. Green 0 for 2 batting 261. One ball, one strike. Ball two. Woody Williams for the Cardinals. Jason Schmidt for the Giants. That's tonight. Two and two. Couple of notes on former Dodgers. Tom Martin worked two thirds of an inning today as Atlanta beat the Mets six five. He came in and got two outs on fly balls. Dave Roberts did not play for the Red Sox. Two and two. And a drive to center going back on the ball is Finley. Picks it off nicely. So no runs no hits a man left and at the end of seven a one one time. As far as the game is concerned you could put the summary on the head of a pin. Sean Green had a base hit to drive in Finley for the Dodger run. Phil Nevin singled home Mark Loretta for the Padre run. Finley in his debut doubled and singled in three trips. We were talking a moment ago as Otsuka loosens up the former Dodgers just for your information Tom Martin pitched two thirds of an inning for Atlanta got two outs they won six five Dave Roberts with the Red Sox did not play Coy Hill the minor league catcher went to Arizona he went 0 for 4 and committed a throwing error Colorado beat Arizona 10 to 2. In a game in progress, Montreal is leading Florida 2 0 in the fourth inning. And as usual down there, it's raining, so there's a delay. Paul LaDuca, 0 for 1 with a walk. Juan Encarnacion, 1 for 1, an infield single. Meanwhile, Akinori Otsuka from Chiba in Japan, 32 years old, 
relieved Jacob Peavy in the eighth inning last night and walked Choi intentionally and then struck out David Ross. This time he'll be facing the top of the order and that would be his tourist Finley and Bradley. But Suka is six and two fine ERA of two strikeout to walk ratio three to one. So he's the middle man of the three. And the next one would be Trevor Hoffman. Right. His tourist twice hit back to the box and flied to right. Fouled away. So David Wells went five and a third, allowed one run. Then Scott Linebrink goes an inning and two thirds. And now Akinori Otsuka and Hideo Nomo, an interested spectator. Fly ball, the left, Klesko coming up, but it's going to drop. So his tourists, little fly ball single, one for four, and now you have Finley and Bradley. His tourists now with Roberts gone. Figures to do perhaps a little more running. He has 17 stolen bases. Dave had 33. Scott Posednik of Milwaukee leads the league in stolen bases. He is 41. So now let's see with Finley, who has doubled and singled. Finley doubled to right, single to center. I just heard a fan, and I it summed it up the attitude in San Diego. He hollered at Finley, you traitor. <laughs> Popped up around the plate, Ramon Hernandez. So Steve Finley lives in Del Mar, fouls out, one down, and Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley against Otsuka, one for two. In the game today, as a walk and a single, uh, we'll watch his tourists especially. Eighth inning, 1-1. One, one. In the dirt, nice save by Ramon Hernandez. Big play this late in the game, which brings up the point about Otsuka. He does not have a wild pitch. Off the plate, two and zero. Oh. Otsuka, 32 years old, so he's accustomed to the job. Very successful in Japan. The scouting report on Otsuka, he has a fastball that he's just gotten up to 93. He has a slider and a splitter. He was a closer for the Chunichi Dragons. Two and two. On deck, Adrian Beltre. So his tourists a leadoff single, but he's still there with one out as Lima and Green look on. There he goes, and a foul ball off third down the line. His tourists has stolen 17 out of 25. We have a 1-1 one -one tie. We're in the eighth. But Suka due to lead off in the bottom half for San Diego. Two and two. So as tourists going on the previous pitch but not on that one. Two balls two strikes.
Nevin holding a corner. Forty four thousand and fifty six. They have packed every inch of Petco. And seeing a, a championship game is first not going and a foul ball down the line out of play. Dodgers go home after the game. And have a brief homestand Pittsburgh Philadelphia. Padres stay home and play Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Two and two. So Bradley bites the dust as Otsuka throwing a slider to put him away. And now the batter will be Adrian Beltre. And of course, with two out, as the Marines go single file, time to go back to camp, time to go back to reality for them. God bless them one and all. And we're back with the game. And we'll see about his tourists with Beltry. Would you run his tourists and risk Beltry not having an at bat? Do you roll the dice and run his tourists hoping you make it? Uh, we'll see. Beltry long out the center lined out a leaping catch by Loretta and struck out. On one. When Beltre struck out in the sixth inning, like several hitters on each team, stopped and said a few words to Doug Eddings. Hasn't been the smoothest day in Doug Eddings' life. On one. And line drive, base hit. His tourist is going to keep on going to third. Flesco gets it back in. So once again, the Dodgers will look to Sean Green. Sean Green struck out when he thought he had walked, fly to left, and then singled in the only Dodger run. So Beltre, a bullet over a leaping Khalil Green, with his tourist going to third as Flesco made the play so now green and so in the bullpen Eric Gagne begins to loosen up so Beltre line drive single he could easily have been three for four today he's one for four his tourist, the big guy at third now in a 1 1 tie, and here is Green. Sean knocked in his 55th run of the year in the sixth inning. Green has only faced Otsuka once, and he walked. Ball one. 92 mile an hour fastball. Ramon Hernandez getting everybody's attention on the infield. There's Torres at third, Beltre at first, Gagne in the pen, 1 1, top of the eighth. And a strike. So you would assume with Gagne in the pen, if the Dodgers don't score, Alvarez would go back out to the mound. And if they do score, they'll ask Gagne to pitch two innings. We'll see if that holds up. One and one to Sean. Wilson checking the action. That's ball two. Oh, it's a great game. Two balls, one strike. Two out. Runners at first and third. Ball three. Jason Worth on deck. 0 for three has struck out twice. 
they might rather either let Green swing at a bad ball or walk him. And that's what they do. It wasn't an intentional walk, but at the same time, he got the feeling they would rather go right against right and rookie against veteran. So Green walks to load up the bases, and here is Jason Worth. 0 for 3 today. Jason Worth in the first game was two for five. He had a single and a double. One for four last night and 0 for three today. And he's up there in a big spot on one. And bounced and blocked a splitter that hit the dirt about four feet in front of home plate. The Worth, three for 14 in the series, has his tourists at third, Beltre at second, and Green at first. Two out, one and one. That's a strike. And boy, this ballpark is alive, and 44,000 on their feet. One and two. Fouled away. The so Jason Worth and Akinori Otsuka hanging tough with his tourists at third, Beltre at second, Green at first, and a one and two count. back he's still there ball just did squirt away from Ramon Martinez Otsuka versus Worth Got him. So Worth strikes out a third time today. The Dodgers lead three. And we're heading for the bottom of the eighth in a 1 1 tie. 1 1, bottom of the eighth inning. And after Wilson Alvarez went to the mound, Jim Tracy now goes to the mound. And Giovanni Carrara will be brought in. The so Carrara will be facing Rich Aurelia, who has been the announced pinch hitter, and will be back. Don't forget the Dodger Adelphia Summer Pack for $30. You can see the Dodgers play the Phillies, Braves, Marlins, and Giants. For more information, check the Dodger website at Dodgers.com. All right, the Dodgers wanted to make sure Rich Aurelia had been announced. He has been he stays in and Alvarez gives way to Giovanni Carrara who came in last night with two on and one out made one pitch and got a double play off the bat of Ramon Hernandez. So now here is Carrara picking up for Alvarez in the bullpen for the Padres Trevor Hoffman. High fly ball, very playable. Jason Worth. Well, that takes care of Aurelia. One away. Down in the Dodger bullpen, we have never seen him pitch. Yancy Brezaban, they tell us, has been clocked at 95. So Brezaban just called up, warming up. The inning began the way it ended. 
If the Dodgers had scored a run, Gagne would have come in apparently. When they didn't, Alvarez went to the mound. So now here is Sean Burrows against Giovanni Carrara. Ball one. Burrows has had one at bat against Carrara and walked. Sean today flied to left, grounded to short, and lost a base hit and a run batted in on a brilliant play by Jose Hernandez. Right. One and one. Dodgers one run, eight hits. They have left eight men, including the bases loaded in the eighth. The Padres one run, four hits. They have left four men. Two and one to count to Sean. Adrian Beltre has played a couple of marvelous plays at third. Cesaris Torres has been all over the lot. Jose Hernandez made a huge play, or it would be two to one, San Diego instead of one one. Two and one. Hit foul off third. Two and two. Giovanni Carrara, two wins and no losses. Giovanni with an earned run average of 1.7. He only worked 15 innings. Two and two. Burrows with Mark Loretta hitting back of him. One out, eighth inning, 1 1. Ground ball hard by Beltre into left field. So Burrows, who went the other way twice and came up empty, just got it by Beltre for the base hit. Adrian got in the fingertips of the glove on it, but that's about all. So Burroughs is one for four. With one out, Mark Loretta, the batter. Burroughs chatting with Sean Green. For a big guy, runs pretty well, and he's stolen five out of eight. Loretta grounded to third, single to center, flied to center, scored the Padre run. Back in the fourth inning. Now back. Loretta, a wonderful second baseman and a marvelous hitter. He has struck out about six, seven percent of the time. That's all. And we're talking about 450 at bats or plate appearances. So you start thinking about a hit and run play, we'll see. Burrows at first, one out in the eighth, one one. The Dodgers have Hernandez, Ross, and Carrara's spot in the ninth. The so one Sean to another over there at first. On one. One ball, one strike. Padre scored in the fourth inning. Loretta single, Klesko sacrifice for the first time this year, and Nevin singled home Loretta. And the Dodgers tied it in the sixth inning. Three singles, the third by Sean Green to score Finley. High drive into right center. Going back is Finley, tagging up his burrows, and the throw relayed not in time. So a long out to center, Burroughs, who runs well, tags up. And the relay from Finlay to Hernandez to his tourists, not in time. Steve was probably 400 feet away when he caught it. So now Ryan Klesko coming up. 
And Jim Colburn going out to talk to Carrara. Klesko two for five in the pass against Giovanni. First base open and the right hand batter Phil Nevin on deck. On paper, Klesko two for five, batting 400. Phil Nevin one for three, batting 333. Oh, so let's see what they choose to do. Klesko has only been walked intentionally four times this year, with Nevin hitting back of him. We'll see if they pitch to. Clasco, the way the Padres pitched to Green and eventually walking. Or will they come after? Ball one. Two out in the eighth. One one tie. Burrows at second with a hole in his knee pants is Phil Nevin. And Clesco, who was diving at balls. The red badge of courage. One and oh. Well, that looks like it. One high, one outside. And Nevin waits. Remember, Nevin, a good hitter and brilliant in daytime. Two balls, no strikes. Three. So this looks a little bit like the way the Padres pitched to Sean Green. Just hope he'll go fishing. Green wouldn't and walk. Plesco hasn't offered. Three and oh. Lesko thought it was ball four, but in watching his body language, he really wants a chance to hit. Pitches. The so one minute it looked like they were going to pitch around him. Now it's a full count. Jim Riggleman and Jim Tracy making a few signs from the dugout. Boy, what a moment here. This big crowd of 44,000. And a high fly ball. Is Torres calling? Worth behind him. Cesar makes the catch. So they pitch to Klesko after all, and he pops it up. They leave Burroughs at second. Big inning for Carrara. And at the end of eight, a 1-1 one, one tie. 1-1 one, one tie as we go to the ninth inning. And be sure to join us tonight at 10 highlights of today's sports action. We'll present the Southern California Sports Report, complete Dodger coverage, and a lot more. The Southern California Sports Report tonight at 10. A double switch for San Diego. Trevor Hoffman comes in along with Terrence Lawn. And since Klesko made the last out, Hoffman goes in Klesko's spot, number three. And Terrence Long plays left field, bats ninth. For Trevor Hoffman, on his way to the Hall of Fame, of course, with over 380 saves. And Hoffman, going into this year, had saved 40 out of 42 against the Dodgers, and he saved one last night. 
He is right up there on the list now 381 behind Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley. So Hoffman will be pitching to Jose Hernandez David Ross and then we'll see about Giovanni Carrara. Hernandez batting 308 he has eight home runs 14 RBIs ball one. Hernandez four for ten in the past against Hoffman. Ryan Klesko was really ticked off with umpire Doug Eddings after he popped up. In fact, he engaged Eddings in a long range hollering match for a moment or two, and I guess he was playing with house money anyway because he was coming out of the game one way or the other. One and one to Jose. Last night, Hoffman pitched the ninth inning and got Cora, Grabowski, and his tourists. Today it's Hernandez Ross, and we'll see about Carrera. Hoffman two and one, an ERA of two. The opposition is hitting 204 against him. Foul back. Trevor, the younger brother of Glenn, who's in the third base coaching box. One and two to count. Trevor will be 37 in October. Born in Bellflower. Went to the University of Arizona. And with that incredible changeup, the best you'll ever see. And Hernandez started his swing yesterday on this change. I mean, way out in front. One away. Hoppy waiting now for David Ross. Hoffman strike out to walk radio. Its ratio is better than five to one. Thirty three strikeouts and only a half a dozen walks. Ross hit back to the box and struck out twice. That's a strike. One ball, one strike, one out. Hesop Choi has come out of the Dodger dugout. He would bat for Carrara. Down in the pen, Eric Gagne. Ross having trouble making contact. Struck out twice last night, twice today. Game one, he had two scoring fly balls. And popped it up. And it will be the third baseman, Sean Burroughs. So with two out, Hesop Choi will come up and hit. Hesop Choi, who has been with the Cubs and the Marlins and played last night and in his debut as a Dodger double to right in his first at bat. And that's a strike. Joy 25 years old and he is a big fella raised on a farm in Korea. Lives in Kwangju in South Korea. He is 6'5", 240, and he said it was a combination of genes, living on a farm where the water is better than in the cities, and a lot of meat and vegetables, and he obviously did a pretty good job. One and one. Two and one the count to Hesop Choi. Joy played basketball, track, volleyball, and soccer. So he's ever an inch an athlete. That's a strike.
So now if you're Choi, you're thinking change, but the fastball can leave you on the station. Two and two the count. Oh, yes. Started to swing early, thinking he was going to get something hard. And instead, Hoppy just pulled the string. So down go the Dodgers. In comes Gagne in a 1 1 tie. Well, talk about your Sunday best. Trevor Hoffman and Eric Gagne battling it out in a 1 1 tie. Alex Cora has just come in the game to take over at second base. And it'll be Phil Nevin, Brian Giles, and Ramon Hernandez. And Eric wants to talk to David. So well, let's see about Gagne. First of all, Nevin. Nevin is five for 20, a 250 batting average with one RBI. And Gagne with an ERA of one and a half. He's three and oh. Ball one. Gagne's strikeout to walk ratio is a rather unbelievable seven to one. Over 70 strikeouts, 10 walks. Nevin, two for three today. Phil singled in the Padre run in the fourth inning. Gagne has not worked since the Thursday afternoon game in Colorado. 3 and 0. One one bottom of the ninth. Three and one. So Boshi rolling the dice, letting Nevin decide three and oh if he wants to go after it. And the count now three and one. Nevin 15 home runs, 59 runs batted in. Three and two. Trevor Hoffman took 14 pitches to retire the Dodgers in order in the top of the ninth. Three and two to Nevin. Foul back. Record crowd. Of course, it's a brand new ballpark. Last night, talking about the largest crowd of the year, 43,726. And today they've topped that, 44,056, including the folks on the grassy hill in right center and the kids playing their own game on the grassy lot in left center. <laughs> And there are other kids playing in the sand. So they get restless, and the Padres have decided to let them move around a little bit. Now there they are in the sand back of right center. Three and two to Nevin. And ball four. So you wonder about whether they would put a runner in for Nevin in this kind of a game and that's what they're going to do. Xavier Nady will run for Nevin here in the ninth inning. Bill having had knee surgery so he figured to come out. So today he had a walk a single and a double. Nady running and now Brian Giles blind to right popped out to his tourists on a marvelous play by the Dodgers shortstop and hit back to the box. Now back Giles against Gagne two for 11. That would be a 182 batting average against the league hitting 279. Two. After Giles, the catcher, Ramon Hernandez, keeping an eye on Nady, who has stolen six out of eight. Oh, 
Oh and two. Ball one. Giles with 15 home runs. 60 runs batted in. Whoa, what a pitch. A splitter. And you could see Giles start, give up, and then the pitch dropped into the strike zone. That was a million dollar pitch. Whoa. Watch, it's going to be up here and then dip down and in. A great pitch to get Giles. He gave up on it and it cost him. The one out, and now the batter. Ramon Hernandez twice grounded to third and walk tries to bunt strike one Jeff Cirillo is out on deck. In fact Peyton has come out Cirillo is back down the steps. Oh and one the count. Nady at first. Nady listed as an outfielder, but when you talk to people about the San Diego Ball Club, they tell you that he's a terrific first baseman. Though so whether he would play first if this game goes into extra innings remains to be seen. One and one. Rob Pichelo, the third base coach, may be hanging out a sign to Hernandez. Ramon Hernandez. We mentioned earlier pretty much of a contact hitter. Strikes out about 10% of the time and a good base runner, so you start thinking, well, they might run him. He is only grounded into three double plays. One and two. Gagne perspiring profusely. Green over to talk to the big guy. One one tie. Ninth inning. Xavier Nady at first. And popped up into shallow right. Bradley was deep, but he's there. So Hernandez a fly ball to right. Two down. Nady holding at first. And Jay Payton coming up. Grounded to short. Single to center and struck out. One for three. Peyton hitting 244. He has four home runs and 39 runs batted in. Fouled away. Bottom of the ninth, two out, one one. The Dodgers one run, eight hits. They have left eight. The Padres one run, five hits. They have left five. Wells, Linebrink, Otsuka, and Hoffman, Perez, Alvarez, Carrara, and Gagne. One. Gagne a tendency once in a while to just show that big breaking curveball to set you up for something else. That was 78 mile an hour sweeper. And the fastball, but he missed. Two and one to count.
Hitting back of Peyton is the shortstop, Khalil Green. Fastball gobbled by Beltre, the full turn, and a good pick by Green at the other end. Woo! The Beltre does a 360 and still gets the ball on a straight line to Green, who vacuums it up, and it's a 1 1 tie. San Diego wins. They'll be one and a half back. If the Dodgers win, San Diego will be three and a half back. Then, of course, the pressure on the Giants because they play an excellent Cardinal team tonight. Woody Williams and Jason Schmidt. So we're going to the 10th inning in a 1-1 tie. As far as extra inning games are concerned, the Dodgers have been in seven, as you see Jeff Cirillo taking over at first place. The Dodgers have won six of seven, and Blaine Neal comes out of the bullpen to replace Trevor Hoffman. Blaine Neal, a young fella from Marlton, New Jersey, makes his home at Haddon Heights. That's uh, just across the river from Philadelphia. He was originally a fourth round pick by the Marlins out of Bishop Eustis High School. He's a big guy, 6'5", 240. And ball one to his tourist. His tourist singled in the eighth inning. Dodgers left him at third. One for four. That's his right. Neal with an earned run average of 1.8 picked up a victory Thursday against the Giants. He hasn't allowed a run in his last 11 games. That would be 12 innings. And he had a zero earned run average in the month of July. Ben Howard, a right hander, went to the Marlins and brought Blaine Neal here. 26 years old. And as far as a fly ball, Giles is there. The one out in the 10, Cesar goes one for five, and the batter, Steve Finley. Only two Dodgers have ever batted against Neal. One, Jose Hernandez, is out of the game now, and the other is Beltre, who is 0 for 1. That's a strike. Finley doubled to right, flied to left, single to center, fouled out. He's two for four. One and one. When Blaine Neal was originally signed by the Marlins, for two years, he was plagued by a sore elbow, so they decided, since he's 6'5", to move him over to first base, but he couldn't hit much at all. Hit about 190, was poor defensively, so they decided, well, let's put him back on the mound. And he's done pretty well. And here he is in the big leagues with a anywhere from 91 to 95 mile an hour fastball. Tight slider and a changeup. Fastball lifted. Here comes Giles. So two fly balls in the 10th inning, and the batter will be Milton Bradley. The Dodger Coca Cola family pack. What a buy. Four reserve level tickets, four Dodger dogs, four Cokes, and a parking pass for $48. And available at every Sunday and Wednesday home game all season long. So for more information, call 323-2241 hit. Jose Lima hadn't been a chance to do much hollering today. That's ball one to Bradley. Milton batting 284. Barely a whisper from Lima working on his gum. One and one. Yeah. 
beaten foul into the dirt. One and two to count. For Blaine Neal, we told you he had that sore elbow, and finally, last September, he had arthroscopic surgery to take out debris and bone spurs, shave down part of a bone to relieve pressure on a nerve. So he's gone through the mill. One and two. And a drive to center. Giles on his horse. It's in the gap. And a diving catch. Oh, what a catch by Jay Payton. Unbelievable. That's as good a catch, and especially under the circumstances. Top of the 10th inning with two out. If he doesn't make that catch, I think Bradley would have had a triple. Look at that. Whoa, and look at the kids behind him. What a view. Bradley at the other end of a great catch, and we have a 1-1 one -one tie. And Khalil Green fouls it back. So Eric Gagne hurt his right leg a little bit on pushing off the rubber. So Gagne has to pitch two innings. Now let's go back. In one appearance against the Colorado Rockies, he made 13 pitches. The next time he made 18 pitches. Now today he made 19 pitches in the ninth inning alone. He's made 22 pitches with three in this inning, and he's just starting it. Green, Long, and Burroughs. When we have an opportunity, we will show you that rather incredible catch by Jay Payton, who caught the ball and was narrowly almost kicked in the head by Brian Giles leaping over him as he windmilled on the dirt track in center field. Three and two to Khalil Green. Robbed of the hit by Beltre and twice fly to center. Hitting 260. We mentioned last night Green can bench press 315 pounds. He's strong. Down he goes. Let's take another look at Jay Payton. I mean this probably would have been a triple. It's in the gap. And Giles and Peyton, and it's going to be Peyton or no one, a diving catch. And you see Giles leap over him. And look at the little ones behind the fence. I mean, they were right next to him when he finally rolled in the dirt. And the kids know all about that. What a play for Bradley. He eventually took his position in right field. And the crowd, no doubt, hollering something to him. They knew that. He had made the catch against Nevin the other night and Bradley took his cap off to the crowd as if say yeah I take my hat off to Peyton. And the fans out there are saying something to Milton that's why he lowered his head laughing. Meanwhile Terrence Long grounds out. Two down. So with two out. Sean Burroughs coming up. Burroughs flied to left, grounded to short, robbed of a base hit and a run batted in by Jose Hernandez, and then single in the eighth inning. So he could be two for four. This has been such a wonderful game. A 1 1 tie and tremendous defensive plays. David Wells walked one. While he was out there. Then Green got a walk in the eighth. And the Dodgers have had Beltre, his tourists, and Green make good plays. That's a base hit. And Bradley over. And Burroughs is going for two. The throw got him from me to you. Oh, what a play by Milton Bradley. Woo. Talking about brilliant plays all day long. And Burroughs runs well, roll the dice with two out in the 10, and that one is right on the money. We have a 1-1 tie as we go to the 11th inning. 
Friday night, Milton Bradley took a two run home run away from Phil Nevin. And then he's robbed on that great catch by Jay Payton. So then Milton retaliates the best way he knows how, feels the base hit by Burroughs, and nails him at second base. This is as really as well played a game as we've seen all year by far. Oh and two to Beltre fly deep to center lined out to second Loretta took a hit away struck out and then singled in the eighth inning. Blaine Neal the fifth San Diego pitcher. One and two. Though it's Beltre, Green, and Worth, and we're in the 11. One and two. Got him. So Beltre, not the type to argue. His look is worth thousands of words. Now saying something. I guess we've had a good eight hitters grumbling at the plate umpire Doug Eddings and look out now. It is not that Beltre has said that much but it's becoming to be an accumulation of disagreements for Doug Eddings. Here's the pitch. Yeah. Kind of jerked by Ramon Hernandez and I believe that misled Eddings one away. Little fly ball back a third down the line slicing foul and out of play. Terrence Long over. One out in the 11. The Dodgers run came in the sixth. The Padres run came in the fourth and that's it. Dodgers have left eight Padres have left six. Another foul ball. Oh and two. Green thought he had walked and then struck out so he got a little hot in the second inning although let's say he got a little warm he doesn't get hot. Adrian Beltre controlled himself just had a few words. The guy who hollered the most Ryan Klesko but he was coming out of the game anyway. One and two. Two and two. Green chasing one off the plate. The Dodger bullpen very, very quiet. So it looks like Gagne, who has made 30 pitches, is going to go out there and pitch his third inning. Trevor Hoffman just pitched one inning. He made 14 pitches and he had the rest of the day off. Here's Jason Ward. Jason is just busting to bust one. I mean he has struck out three times and flied to right. We were talking before about Neil having arm surgery. He was pitching in a game and gave up a grand slam home run to Mike Lieberthal. Went to bed that night and when he woke up his arm was locked at right angles he couldn't move it. So that's when he had to go and have the surgery. He had no choice and he has battled back and here he is pitching his second inning in relief. One one in the 11. Gagne is going to be asked to pitch his third inning. I would guess and it's only a guess that Gagne has not pitched three innings in relief. I don't believe he's pitched three innings since he was a starter. Yep. 
Three and one to Jason Worth. Got him. So Jason Worth strikes out four times. And that makes it three and two. So a full count to Worth. Beltre sitting there as if say, yeah, I had a pitch like that called on me. And this big crowd is up again. Did he? Now they got him. And Worth is angry at Eddings. And now running out of all people is Milton Bradley to save the left fielder. Boy, they have been nibbling on Doug Eddings all day, both teams. Meanwhile, Neal strikes out the side, and we're still 1-1. In the 11th, you know, Doug Eddings has been so involved in the game. He's been a major league umpire for five years. He's from Las Cruces, New Mexico, went to New Mexico State, and was the home plate umpire for Cal Ripken Jr.'s last major league game. Well, he has sure been involved in this one. And now Gagne working his third inning and a line drive base hit to right field by Mark Loretta. And the Padres now have the winning run aboard for Loretta. Two for five. And the batter, Jeff Cirillo, is coming up. So Cirillo hitting third and playing first base, finishing up for Nevin. Looking to see about Cirillo bunting. He has not sacrificed this year, but neither did Klesko, and he got an important sacrifice in the fourth inning. So Bruce Boshi asked Klesko to sacrifice. He did, and Neville single in the run. Now Dave Hansen, former Dodger, has come back to play for San Diego. The bunt in the air, foul, caught by Green. So Dave Hansen will now come up. Dave, the veteran, hitting 266 in his career. Wonderful pinch hitter, and immediately Jim Colburn going out to talk to Eric Gagne on how to pitch to him. Hansen at one time and for quite some time with the Dodgers. Then up in Seattle. Well, he's really bounced around a lot. Well, they've had their meeting about him. Hansen played with the Padres. And hit only 164 as a pinch hitter. So they sent him out. Now they've got him back again. Ball one. One and all the count. Two and oh the count to Dave. Acquired from Seattle just the other day in exchange for right hand pitcher John Huber. Up there he was hitting 282 and he had two home runs and 12 RBI. He's a pro hitter. Fouled away. Hansen originally traded by San Diego to Seattle to get Jeff Cirillo. 
Well, the life of the Major League Baseball player, the ups and downs and around and around. On deck, Brian Giles. Comebacker, Gagne to his turrets. And to Green for the double play. Nice play by Eric Gagne. 1-6-3 to erase Loretta. And we're heading for the 12th, 1-1. Dodger Baseball on FSN West 2 is brought to you by Jack in the Box and the new Panito, the only way to eat gourmet on the go. And by your Southern California Ford dealers and the Ford F-150. As we work our way now to the 12th inning, Ricky Stone, who interestingly enough, after Dave Hansen, a former Dodger, makes the last out, Ricky Stone, a fourth-round pick by the Dodgers 10 years ago, pitching to Alex Cora. That's right. Stone pitched briefly in Friday night's game and gave up a single to Beltre, a triple to Green, and then a scoring fly ball. Fly ball to Peyton. One away. So Cora flies to center, and now two changes for the Dodgers. Brent Main is coming up, and Robin Ventura is out on deck. So for the veteran catcher, Brent Main, it'll be the first time we have seen him in action as a Dodger. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Darren Driver, because Gagne pitched three innings today, made 37 pitches. Gave up two hits, struck out two in a walk. So it was a full day, Eric. But remember, tomorrow was an off day, and that's part of the thinking. A strike to Maine. So David Ross giving way to a veteran, half swing for a strike, 0 and 2. Brent Maine was in 113 games last year for Kansas City. He had a half a dozen home runs. So with one out in the 12th inning, Maine batting for Ross and then stay in the game to catch. Robin Ventura is on deck to bat for Gagne, and then we'll see Dreyfer. One and two. Got him. So Maine joins the club of dissatisfied hitters. Down he goes. And now Ventura to hit for Gagne. Dodgers going to the bench. Grabowski batted for Perez and lined out to center. Choi batted for Carrara and struck out. Maine bats for Ross and strikes out. And here's Robin. Ball one. One run, eight hits for the Dodgers. One run, seven hits for the Padres, but the Dodgers have not had a base runner since the eighth inning. Ventura, a long fly ball. Back goes Giles to the wall. Gone. Robin hits it out. Boy, what a bolt of lightning that was. Ventura getting a hug from Giovanni Carrara, fives and pats all around. And the Dodgers have taken a two to one lead on the pinch hit home run by Robin. 
That's his second pinch hit home run this year. He has three all told. And a strike to Cesar Estorz. And home run way out in right center was caught by a fellow wearing a Dodgers shirt. So the veteran Ventura still has a wallop. Well, the Dodgers, their first hit since Beltre singled in the eighth inning. Twelve in a row had been retired, and now Gagne might pick up a win. Remember, he's 3 and 0. Line foul. And I tell you, Robin picked a tough part of the ballpark. It's 411 feet out there. So you talk about a guy coming cold off the bench. It's going to go way out there. One and two. And that's a hopper to second. And Loretta will take care of his first. It goes one for six. But Robin Ventura went one for one. And we're heading to the bottom of the 12th. Two to one Dodgers. Dodgers bottom of the 12 Brent Maine is behind the plate and the veteran catcher trying to nurse Darren driver through the inning and Brian Giles at the plate ball one Darren in his 54th game with a record of one and two cupped up last night for three hits two walks and the loss line drive base hit into left field. So here come the Padres trying to battle back. The tying run aboard with Giles. On that home run by Robin Ventura, first man to greet him was Eric Gagne, followed by Giovanni Carrara. A rare two guys beat Lima to get to the hero. But whether he stays a hero remains to be seen. Ramon Hernandez now with Giles at first. And you got to figure he's going to try to bunt. He has sacrificed three times this year. No. On one. So Beltre playing him well in on the grass at third. And Boshi had him take a shot. See if he tries it again. Two to one Dodgers, bottom of the 12th. Brian Giles over there at first base has stolen seven out of nine and you can bet that's a concern. On one. In the dirt nice save by Maine. Darren Driver trying to pick up a save. He does not have any. One and two on an earned run average of 3.6. Uh, Dallas Prez, as usual, got just one run. Slicing fly ball. Bradley in foul ground. Reaches over the railing and can't get it this time. Well, Milton. Going back to his position, timeout for the moment. One and two. Chopper foul. What a day. Wells, Linebrink, Otsuka, Hoffman, Neal, and Stone, Perez, Alvarez, Carrara, Gagne, and now Driver. Jeff Weaver, who had a breeze the other night when the Dodgers scored 12. So you get 12 one night, then you come up a buck short with two the next game. And now you get two and try to nurse it to beat Nevin and Loretta in company two to one.
This has to be a tough spot for the catcher. Foul tip and down goes Hernandez. So they had him swinging away. And he strikes out. You know, you're Brent Maine, you're a veteran. You've been sitting in the dugout all game. You wind up pinch hitting, but now you're not only asked to catch, you're asked to perhaps make that throw to second base with a good base run at Giles at first. Pretty tough duty. Talking about tough duty, the batter is Jay Payton. And if you didn't see his catch on the ball hit by Bradley, you really missed a dandy in the 10th inning. Ball one. Peyton with the bat, one for four, singled and got as far as second, would have scored, except Burroughs was robbed of the hit by Jose Hernandez for the third out. A great defensive game. Brilliant. Both sides. That's a strike. Here's the catch. Watch Peyton. He's not only going to dive, but roll over. Giles leaps over him, and he lands at the feet of the kids who are ecstatic. What a picture. And Bradley went out to right field and tipped his cap to the fans, meaning how much he admired Peyton's catch. One ball, one strike, one out. Foul ball. Darren Driver coming into the game. His strikeout to walk ratio just about two to one. Eric Gagne in line for his fourth win if Driver can come up with his first save. One and two to Peyton. Peyton did not face Driver last night. In the past, he's just one for 13. That's less than a buck. On deck, Khalil Green. One and two. So down goes Peyton. Driver strikes out Hernandez, strikes out Peyton. And now standing in his way is Khalil Green. The shortstop robbed of a hit by Beltre, twice flied to center, and in the 10th inning, Gagne struck him out. So Dallas Prez, he was out there in the sunlight for six great innings, allowed only one run and has nothing to show for it. Check swing foul, 0 and 1. Two out, 12th inning, two to one Dodgers. On a bomb by Robin Ventura to the deepest part of the ballpark. It went out where it's 4 11. Right there. Gagne has a chance to pick up his fourth win. Dreifert his first save. One and one. And a reminder, Tuesday night, Brad Penny will make his debut as a Dodger against Pittsburgh's Oliver Perez. How about that? Seven years ago. One and one. Right. Driver hit 96 with that fastball. And again, the crowd gets up, but those who get up have voted Dodger.
win or lose this has been a magnificent game tough on the managers but a great game before forty four thousand and fifty six. High fly ball into left field work to the track. Wouldn't you know it would cut that close. And so driver gets a save. Gagne gets a win. Robin Ventura gets the golden chair. And the Dodgers not only win, take two out of three and push the Padres back three and a half games. What a finish. No runs, one hit, the man left. Watching the San Diego dugout with Loretta and Nevin. And on the final out, a long fly ball. So Eric Gagne is 4-0. Driver gets his first save in seven years. And the Dodgers take a two to one victory home and in the dugout on that long fly ball they're all sweating it out and Jason Worth catches it. We'll be right back. Out of forty four thousand and fifty six saw a magnificent game between the Dodgers and Padres and went twelve the Dodgers win it two to one on the big home run by Robin Ventura in the top of the 12th inning. Now if you're the left fielder for the visiting team and you have struck out four times you can imagine the people in left field were all over Jason Worth all day. So when he catches the last out of the game it was a human reaction I'm sure as Jason walks his final shot at the fans. See you later. So Jason Word brings back the ball. The Dodgers bring back the victory because of the second pinch hit home run of the year by our player of the game, Robin Ventura. Clearing the fence at the 411 mark. And he indeed was the player of a magnificent game. A reminder. It will be Brad Penny and Oliver Perez Tuesday night with the Pirates. For the moment, the Giants are five back. If they lose tonight, they'll go to five and a half. If they win tonight, it'll go back to four and a half. But we do know San Diego trails the Dodgers by three and a half, and the Dodgers have beaten them eight out of 12. Once again, the final score in 12 innings, the Dodgers two and the Padres one. For Ross Porter and Rick Monday, this is Vin Scully saying so long from San Diego. Just a reminder, for all the day's local sports news, don't miss the Southern California Sports Report tonight at 10. We'll talk to you Tuesday night from Dodger Stadium. Good afternoon, everybody.